proszę o mnie zasęga, nie proszę o
stand if you would. You can't get up, I understand, but you can't get to your feet. Turn around and shake somebody's hand and tell them how good they look this morning. Now don't that make you feel better? Some of you got up this morning and you said, I don't look good today. <laughs> feel like that nobody loves you. And we want you to know that you're loved. Amen. And you really do look good today. Guess what? We're back. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you, that's a good place to visit. But I wouldn't want to live there. I'm not saying those people are crazy, but they can't drive. <laughs> They're awful. I thought Atlanta was bad. Florida is worse than Atlanta. I don't want to go to either one of them. But I'm glad to be back home. Amen. Glad to get Sister Lawless back home. She's uh, She got a little bit homesick on me. Had to take her shopping twice. <laughs> I've ready to come home too after that. <laughs> It's so good to see all of you. We've got about 30, 35 people on vacation this morning. And I don't blame them for going. I just hope they'll hurry up and get back. Amen. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Everybody loves the Lord. Give Him a big hand clap. This morning.
after tomorrow night, beginning at 6.30, Bible school will begin for our children. And they've worked hard on getting everything ready. Sister Tina and them have done a great job. And she's tired and give out. Wore out. She's probably going to have to massage her feet tonight. But she gets it or not. We'll still start with Bible school. Tomorrow night at 6.30. It will go to 7.45. So you come and bring your children. That's what it's for. If we're not having it for the adults. We're having it for the children. So you come and bring your children and all those that are helping you be on time and be here to help with this because it's a hard job. Some of you that's got one child, one child, you can't handle them. Some got two and you can't handle them. So you imagine having probably 30 or 40 children out there tomorrow night that they can straps and belts and two by fours. So you bring them and they won't beat them too much. But uh, they'll enjoy it. So you come and bring your children tomorrow night. Acts 16, 25 through 26 said, At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosened. I want to preach to you this morning for a little while, or ever how long the Lord would be pleased with, on revival. Revival. Revival doesn't start in the church. Revival starts... In individuals' hearts. Right. It's time to have a chain breaking, earth shaking revival. Paul and Silas was preaching, was one of the preachers of the great messages that had ever preached to mankind. These men were out preaching the message of Jesus Christ when they entered into a certain city, the Bible says that they were preaching became offensive to the Romans. Do you know preaching becomes offensive to people today that don't want to live right, that don't want to do right? It gets offensive to them. These men were out preaching the Word of God. In fact, if you read the whole entire chapter, you'll find somewhere around the 19th through the 24th that Paul and Silas was caught and taken into the marketplace to the rulers. And you find out that in verse 19 that they taken them because they were disgruntled about what they were doing. They were brought into the magistrate and they were accused of causing a great trouble in the city in verse 20. The Bible tells us that they were teaching customs that were not lawful to the Romans to receive. And so the multitude rose up against them and the magistrate ran off their clothes. In other words, they took their clothes off in verse 21 and 22. And at this point, they were commanded to be beaten in verse 22. And when they had laid many stripes, the Bible said, upon them and casted them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safety. We're having received such a great charge, thrust them into an inner prison and made their feet fasten unto shots in verse 23 and 24. They were the modern day preachers of that time. They preached with passion. And because of this, they were stopped on their journey from spreading the gospel. It was time that called them to lose everything that they had and be beaten for spreading the message of Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you today, but they did not get disgusted and discouraged. They didn't have any clothes and they didn't have their freedom. They were locked up in the prison 
prison cell and they were in the prison in the city and they weren't allowed to be preaching. If you really think about it, these men really didn't have anything to praise God about. They preached the message of Jesus Christ and were fulfilled in their calling that Jesus commanded them to do. He had called them to be commissioned. But here's what I like about these two guys. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sing praises unto God. And the prisoners, the Bible said, heard them as they began to sing. And suddenly a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. Man, that must have been some kind of song that they were singing for the, them to begin to shake the prison. I don't know what it was, but I'd love to know it where I could try to sing it and see if God still shaped the foundation. I would to God this morning that the Lord would come down and shake the foundation at the Donald's Church of God. I would this morning that he would shake it and not only shake the foundation, but shake some people that's on top of that foundation that would cause them to move up for God. Because I'm here to tell you, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. And he will, somebody lift your hand and shout glory, he will not change. The Bible said that immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands or stocks, whatever you want to call them, was loosened. Can I preach to you this morning and tell you that if you find yourself late in the midnight hour and you're having a need, don't give up. Don't quit. God's still there. Hallelujah. I want to slow down this morning and I want to preach this because I preached it to Sister Lollis all the way up the road Thursday. She's probably tired of hearing it. But at the midnight hour, God won't forsake you. You just keep holding on to the promise he declared Brother Jerry in his word he said I'll never leave you Amen. anybody ever read that Amen. he said I'll never leave you hallelujah I want to stop right there and ask you one more time anybody ever read that where he said I won't leave you anybody ever read where he said I won't forsake you Hallelujah. Anybody ever read where he said, I'll go with you even to the end of the way. If you have, you ought to have a praise in your heart this morning to know that there's a man that died on the cross that will come down whenever you need him. He's that kind of God. He won't let you down. He won't strand you. Will be your very present help in the time of trouble. Don't look at the left. Please don't look at the right. Look straight ahead and keep your eyes upon the Lord. And don't let anything or anybody get in the way of it. Keep your eyes centered upon Him. Look to Jesus. You might find yourself going through the midnight and you may feel like there's no God. But you hear me this morning and you hear me well. God is not a God who will leave you stranded on the side of the road. He's not a God that when you need Him the most, He will forsake you. Oh, I feel this this morning. He's not a God that 
when everything's going wrong, He'll leave you. He's not a God, but He said, I'll be with you. I am going to be there in your present time. He'll come right into the situation that you're stuck in. You just get up in the midnight hour and you begin to pray and praise God. And you will find out in an hour that you think not. He might come, not come personally. He may not see him with your mortal eyes. You may not be able to reach out and touch him with your hand. But he'll send an angel the Lord down. And he'll be there to help you no matter what your needs are. We have to keep our focus and you'll worship Him and everything that you have within yourself. Just like Paul and Silas had no place to go. Shackles on their feet that seemed to have no hope. I'm not going to ask you if you ever had shackles on your feet because if you have, you've been in jail and I don't want to know about it. Shackles on their feet that seem to leave them with no hope. But they begin to sing. They begin to praise. To the one who holds the key. And by his grace. And by the time. Their praise. Brother Charles reached the throne. They were dancing free. Do you hear what I said? They were dancing free. You got to give God praise. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime. Praise Him in the evening time. Just continue to worship Him and everything you have to praise Him with, I tell you that God will make a way. You can have a chain-breaking, earth-shaking revival within your own heart if you will do what He says to do. Amen. That's why so many people are unhappy today. They're set on a fence. They want to fall this way. They want to fall. They're straggling the fence. You can't straggle the fence serving God. Amen. You either for Him or you're against Him. You can't sit on a fence pole and straddle the fence. You have got to decide I'm going to serve God or I'm going to do what I want to do. And if you're willing to do what you want to do, you will never serve God. God in that capacity because he said that I'm a jealous God and I shall not have any other gods before me. You'll either put him first or you don't put him at all. Amen. Worship the king. Magnify his name. Give God the glory. In Acts 17, 2 and 9, I'm not going to read it, but they were turning the world upside down. It's safe to assume that almost everybody has heard these stories read about the great revivals of God. We constantly hear preachers talk about old time revivals. Where it used to be. But notice what I said we have heard about, we have read about, we've talked about it, we have revivals. Sometimes they do good and sometimes they don't. And we want to talk about the way it used to be. And I've said this before, but I've got to say it this morning. They used to sit on those pews that when you sit on them, they cracked and they pinch you when you get up. Do you remember that? Right on the back of the leg, the thing would hurt. That's the way it used to be. They had fans in the window the way it used to be. Every time I walk over there, that does. 
had fans in the winter. It blowed the mosquitoes in. The flies. That's the way it used to be. We'd drive old cars that didn't have air conditioning. Then I ought to have heat. Some of them were louder than they would have been, but people like that. Man. And, uh, that's the way it used to be. Well, you can go back the way it used to be if you want to. I ain't. I like the patty pews. I like the air conditioning. Amen. I like getting in a car, turning it on, and air conditioning blowing in my face. I like it. My car now has got air conditioning in the seat. You talking about good? It was good going down yonder. It was so cold I had to turn it off. I'm here to tell you, I don't want to go back to what it used to be. I don't want to ride a horse to church and get off like that. <laughs> Not me. I want to live for God just like it is right now. We have never, never, but Charles had it like we have today. We've never had it where we can come to an air conditioned building, sit down in a pew, and lift our hands and worship the God of all. I'm here to tell you, I'm not going back, but I'm going up, hallelujah, with Jesus and the trump of God. I'm going up to be with Him. And I'll tell you something this morning. There's nothing that wants me, makes me want to go back to what it used to be. I'm happy with the way it is right now. And I'm going to serve God. And I'm going to lift the deity of His great name until He returns again. Amen. We don't see revivals anymore like we used to. The greatest revival in all time was right after the day of Pentecost. The world was turned upside down. Paul turned the world upside down. And here we are in 2018 and we see all the wickedness and all the immortality of the world today and see all the things that are happening. And we don't understand why. How good the devil has penetrated everything and anything in the world today. He's got in everything. He's got in churches. He's got in schools. He's got in hospitals. He is everywhere. I'm here to tell you, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We see so many people that sits on church pews that needs Jesus. Never before has the world needed to be turned upside down more than it is today when we live. We need a little shaking, but we don't see it anymore. If there's something different about our message they preach, it's still fresh. It's still new. Just like it was in 2,000 years ago. But I want to tell you something today. That same power. Yes, right. yeah. That same power that empowered Paul and Silas to preach that message is still flowing in the church today. But people will not receive it anymore. Amen. I want you to know that we can have a world-turning revival. Paul was fired up and he was loaded with the anointing and he had to preach in the Spirit. And I've come here to preach today and let you know that God still moves. 
You may be here this morning. And you may not understand it, but He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the good thing is, He's going to never change. We change. Sometimes we come to church and we're in the best mood we can be and we're smiling and we're telling everybody all oh, just the good things about the Lord and then on Sunday night we come back and somebody said something to us or we thought somebody done something to us and all of a sudden we're mad. We're mad at the whole world. But he said that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen. That tells me he must not be moody. There's a lot of moody, groody, mean people in this world Amen. that says, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I'll leave that to another time. When you love the Lord the way you're supposed to, He come before children. Amen. He come before wives. Amen. And He come before husbands. Amen. When you really love Him. And if you don't love him that way, you're not going to make it. Because he's got to be first. We can preach our messages, the message of Jesus, and tell everybody about it. But until we get to where God wants us to be, we must preach Calvary. That's the only way that we're ever going to have chain-breaking, earth-shaking revival. But revival doesn't start in the church. It doesn't start in the piano, the organ, the drums, the guitars, or any of these instruments. It doesn't start there. Revival just doesn't show up. Revival has to begin in you. It's got to begin in you. And if it doesn't begin in you, you know, I remember when I was a state evangelist, I had a little briefcase that I carried with me because I had so much stuff in it. Somebody, people thought, well, maybe he just bringing that to look good. It wasn't that. In fact, I still got it today. Just a lot of poor paint or something all over it, but I don't wish it did. But I still got it. It's pretty brown leather. She's poured red paint or something. I'll look at you, but you probably see it, though, except it's all over it. <laughs> yeah. It's just being honest. <laughs> no, I don't pray it anymore. <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to impress anybody anymore. <laughs> but I take it. And I keep my stuff in it. But I didn't bring a revival in my briefcase. An evangelist doesn't bring a revival. The church has to be ready for a revival. If he comes to preach, it will just become another series of service. And I want to tell you something. One of some of the boringest services that I've ever been in is when you've had revival and the church is not ready for it. Amen. We need a revival. We need a revival. Not just a revival to shake our church, but a revival to shake churches all around. Amen. Because we need God to move like He's never moved before. It's time. People are dying unprepared. Listen, I'd rather have a person that's backslidden on God and admit it that have somebody says I'm a Christian and no they're not. Because you can help that backslider, but you can't help that one that says I'm a Christian. Right. And they're fooling themselves. Amen. You can't do it. Amen. You can't do it. Whatsoever. You can't do it. I used to preach. I'd rather have a man smoking a King Edward cigar and let me see him than run around behind me and smoke it and tell me he's okay. 
God's real, folks. He's real. And He's wanting to bless us and He's wanting to touch us. This church has been blessed. It's been blessed. It's been blessed. Look around. See what God's done. And He's not done doing what He's going to do. But you and I have got to put Him in our heart the way He wants to be. Musicians, come back. Help me. He said, for this promise is unto you and your children and to all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. This message is for you. It's for us. How many here tonight, this morning can honestly say, preacher, I've been blessed? Would you raise your hand? Amen. If you really, really, really been blessed, I want you to stand to your feet. If you haven't been blessed, just keep your seat. And I've always been able to bless the Lord with what He's done for me. He's done a whole lot more for me, Sister Taylor, than I've done for Him. He's been a whole lot better to me than I've been to Him. And I know there's things in this world that discourages us. But we can't quit. We got to go on. Some of you under the sound of my voice could make some of the best workers that the Lord of the church could ever afford. But you got to want to do it. And you got to put God first. I like it because when you put God first and you're laying there at night and you're hurting. Sister Kim, like I know you do sometimes. Brother Michael laying there asleep. He don't know nothing about the pain that you're going through with. But you can look up. And you say, Lord, Michael might not know it, but you do. You do, Lord. And I know you're here to help me. And you will. And all of a sudden, that particular time, God comes down and He touches you. And I know you've experienced that. He's that kind of God. With every head bowed and never eye closed. This morning, if you're under the sound of my voice, you want to do more for God than you've ever done. I want you to make your way to the front of this church. Because I'm going to tell you something. Everything you own, even down to your children, they're not yours. They belong to God. And God can take away everything you've got if you don't serve Him. And He will. He said He'll have no respect to person. I want to say this and I'm close. That young man sitting on the back row back there, Brother Byron. Rededicating his life to God. I didn't know about him. I didn't know if he was going to make it or not. Neither did he. When he came in that door today, almost shouted. Because if you know where he come from, where he is today. You'd say, preacher, a miracle has taken place in his life. Folks, I want to tell you something. Don't play around with God. Don't play around with God and do your thing and leave him to life. Because if you do, he'll get your attention sooner or later. And when he gets it, it may not be the way you want him to. But he'll get your attention somewhere, somehow. I feel like this morning there's some people in this congregation. You need to pray. Are they one that would come? Any 
Anybody want a close walk with God? You can't help anybody else until you help yourself. You gotta help yourself first. Father, we do honor you and thank you, Lord God. We just lift you up today, Lord God, with thanksgiving and praise, knowing that you're able to minister and guide our hearts that we leave this sanctuary today, Father. Help us each one, Lord God, to walk according to your word, according to your will and your purpose, Father. Lord God, we just honor your precious name today. In Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. There's a ladies' meeting of the choir immediately after service. So all the ladies, please come to the choir, please.